what's happened in the last video. I guess I can examine this, I can examine that, can I examine the piano? I can. What about the shiny things? I'm gonna examine the dead, but what? Okay, I thought it went away. Get the shiny thing. Hello, pad. Presumably belonging to the deceased girl, is lying on the ground near her body. Looks like she was using it to chronicle her experiences here in the school building. The letters are written in pink ink, and they're easily legible. I did this Sachiko ritual with Nozomi and the others. And then all of a sudden, I was out like a light. When I came to, I was here, surrounded by corpses. I can't even see how many times I vomited. I want to go home. We three have to stick together. If we don't, I think we're good as dead. Like that high school student we met yesterday. There's nothing left to eat in here. I think we've been here for a week now, but it's hard to say for sure. I really want to take a bath. And brush my teeth too. The three of us talked it over, and decided to eat that dead body. It was tough and bloody. It felt it tasted so wrong. Rena. Rena? That sounds a familiar name from an anime called Higurashi. And you know Ren is also another psychopath. Soldier of thought, but no Zumi threw it up. Soldier threw, I mean. He came again. Zumi was injured. Now she's just getting her way. Ren was crying. But I'm just hungry. Nozomi's not coming. I think she's been killed already. Oh well. If Rena comes, I know what I have to do. That is... not good. Can I look at you now? Can I look at your body? That's a comparatively fresh corpse. Based on size and uniform, it looks like to be the body of a female junior high school student. The throat seems to have been torn out, resulting in a copious amount of blood, not only on her uniform, but pulled along the floor as well. Her mouth, too, is hanging out gape. And she has no tongue. What was, this used to, what was used to cut her apart like this? Her student ID is bloody, but still legible. Kyo Koyo Girls Academy Middle School. Haruna Harukaze. That's nice to know, I guess. Maybe you you ate a bunch of people, you know. That's not a nice thing to do to people. Fukuroi, look. There's something in here. Wait, are we like at a party now? Are we like is he following me? That's cool. Something small is firmly jammed between the two of the keys on the piano. It seems to have been wedged in with tremendous force, making it impossible to move either of the surrounding keys. Yeah, there's definitely something in there. But I don't think we're getting any out there anytime soon. We needed something we could fit into a tiny space between the keys in order to pop it out. I don't have anything like that. Maybe we can use this memo pad. You can slip it through there. Slip it. God, I... I... No. I, I already read this before. Thank you. I'm going to now go and examine this candle because I haven't yet. It's one of the candles I found in the room. I knew it. I never guessed. There are rows of awards and plaques in one of the shelves here. Among them is a small, rectangular box. What could this be? Freaking take the box. The rest is like Pandora's box. We're not gonna get screwed over. The cabinet's glass door is locked. Nope. We can't get into it anyways. There's a note here. Hello, note. The seal must be undone. This tragedy must not be allowed to spread any further. I know. Just tell Sachi go that I don't think she'll listen to me, though. Where should I go? The exit, the boys' room. Where's the girls' room? Is there no girls' room? I can go to the main blurge. Nah. S this second wing, first floor. I don't think I've ever been here before, have I? Nah. Staff room. Staff room is always good places to be. Maybe I'll find some other people just lounging around watching some TV, drinking some coffee. In a staff room. That would be nice. If it's not locked and there's not a dead skeleton in front of it. Which both seem to be a thing. That, yep, that should I, I'm going to look at the body first, because usually spirits come to kill me. There's a corpse here that almost seems to be resting against the wall. Or perhaps it was propped up post-mortem. 
Looks to be the remains of a male senior high school student. His wrists and ankles are bound with wire, and there also appear to be copious amounts of wire around his neck. His name tag reads, Kuroshiki Industrial High School, Masuro Nijino. That's the same- Holy, that was a loud noise? Is that a ghost? Like, for real? Crap, this isn't good. My legs are shaking. You're still alive, aren't you? If you don't want to change anytime soon, then take my advice. Trust no one. Not a single person. Okay. I remember that, Mr. Spirit. I'm also going to leave, because you scare me, Mr. Spirit. I'm sorry to say that, but you do give me some cold pricklies, and not the warm fuzzies. Which, I actually enjoy the warm fuzzies, but not the cold pricklies. The boys' room is completely boarded up. There's no way to get inside now. There's another dead skeleton and another spirit, right in front of a locked door. Well then, let's look at this. It's a thoroughly decomposed corpse. Based on size of the uniform, it looks to be a body of a male junior or senior high school student. There's a student ID name tag on his blazer. Rubens Academy Senior High School. Koichi Kanisada. Let's look at the spirit now and see what he has to say. Do you know what lies beneath this school? I believe Sachiko's dead body along with the power of the bodies of all the dead other people. It's a mire of agony and torment that can drive men's madness into a single touch. That too. Thank you for enlightening me. I never knew that. Let's go to the main blow. Okay, I cannot go to the main blow. Let's go to the exit then. Because I want to leave this place. This is... This looks exactly like the exit from the, the first wing. But it's not. It's from the second wing. That's weird. Can I examine this again? Yeah, I knew that. Uh, yep. I knew that. I uh, yes. I understand. Wait, no, wait, no, I did not I did not understand. Looking closely, something seems to have been shoved into his mouth. Look, there's something in here. I'm going to check his face out. I could definitely see something in his mouth, but I don't think I can, you know? Allow me. Oh, okay. definitely not a fan of maggots crawling all over me. Fukuroi dug around inside the mouth of the severed head for a few moments, and finally withdrew his hand. He was gripping something tightly between his now foul smelling, discolored, and dully glistening fingers. Here, I've got tissues. Oh, thank you. It seems to be a, a key of some sort. It's a very fancy key as well. After thoroughly wiping off all the maggots and bits of rotting flesh, the item Fukuroi produced from the head looks like an old copper key. That's nice to know. Let's go over to... Maybe I can go to the bridge now. With the key? I cannot. Well, I can... Did I need a key for the music room? Maybe I could use... I'm gonna go back to the music room later and see if I can use the key to remove that one thing. Just like slide it through there and you know, small crevices used with keys. Goodness. No? Okay. And why, we should have, we could have took the wire from that one guy's throat. I know it was like gruesome and probably shouldn't do that, but we could have. Here's the girls room by the way. Is that all that's here? There's a ref room. And yeah, that looks like, like all I can get to now. Let's get here. Wait a second. Right here is the hole in the ground, right? And that means I'm on the other side of it. Am I? Am I on the other side? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just giving myself false hope. Let's go to the girls room. And see, the people are gonna probably think I'm pervs, even though we're no one even here. Or maybe the uh, world thinks we're pervs and this blocks us out beforehand. The girls' bathroom enters the covered in protective charms. I knew it. I'm gonna read this paper. It looks like something is written here, but the lettering is so faint and illegible that it shouldn't even be there at all. You should just tear it down so no one will waste their time clicking on it. Let's go to the ref room. And see what referees are there to teach me about sports. Because I would like to rejuvenate my mind with some good sports. The door and window I like are frozen in place, and it's just decoration of the wall. 
Nothing even rattles when pushed. That's not good, but there's a bucket. Can I use the bucket? It looks like a bucket. I would have never guessed. Probably used by the custodians for mopping the floors. There's nothing inside. That's nice to know. Because I, I'm gonna go use the key in that music room now. I am now in the music room. Wait, holy crap! I know now. I can use the key to get into the here and I can open up the box. There's a several row. Yeah, I know that. I just want the box. I'm going to take out the box. The cabinets. I know that. Use the key. Use. Ah, uh, maybe I can use this key to wedge it out of here, which I came in the first. Thing. Yeah, I know there's something in there. Yep. Yes, I know. Doesn't look like I can do anything. Well, crap. Okay, hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, hey. I went down a floor, and I went to the art room. I wasn't actually expecting this to work, but now he says the key could fit in the hole. I am going to use the old key, and not walk away. Alright, it's a match. Not really, it's a key. It's funny. I'm gonna go into the art room now. Is there gonna be that one chick huddling in the corner? Is there? All the way to the right? It doesn't look like it. And I think she would be in that corner. It's highlighted. What's going on? Why is it so cold? I've got a bad feeling about this. We should get far away from here. I'm guessing that there actually is the soul of that one girl there and she's making it cold. And that's why it highlights. It's a good thing I knew she was there in the first game. Because I'm sure a bunch of people wouldn't have been... They would have missed out on that. I don't know why they'd be playing this game if they haven't played the first one. But hey, I know some people do. I know a bunch of people actually just jumped into episode like 15 of this before even seeing Corpse Friday the first one or seeing the previous episodes and I'm just like, ah, Did you know I can't do anything about that. It's their choices. It's their life. It's faint. I know it's invisible from a distance. But there disappears. There appears to be a painting from the white rose on the canvas. Maybe it has the water stain. Maybe. Maybe indeed. Is something up here? It's going. Yeah, I, I know it's cold. I understand. Is this? It's a portrait of a girl with long black hair, but her face has been completely blotted out with red paint. I don't think that's paint. I think that's blood. Okay. Can it? There's a plaster model of a human arm on one of the shelves. Maybe it was used for sketching. The fingers are all stained red, as if covered in blood. It probably is blood. The heck is this? That doesn't look like paint, does it? Nah, it's blood, like I've already said. It's still life depicting hydrangeas. There is a palette knife I can use to get the thing out of the piano. They're going to have a conversation about it. I'm going to take it. And I'm going to, yes, it's going to come in handy. I'm going to go use it on the piano. After I'm going to examine this cabinet, and maybe this hole. I cannot examine a hole. Maybe this cement block. Is that even a cement block? It looks like a knocked over stool. Because it is one. I'm gonna examine this. There are quite a lot of objects on these shelves and these drawers. But every one of these is fixed in place. So they're just decorative accents. Is Yeah, it's gonna say the same thing. Let's leave this popsicle stand and go to the music stand. It's much better stand than the popsicle stand and the art stand. It has musical stuffs. It's probably going to have some sort of rock and roll that's emitting out of it. Maybe it's going to have some creepy ambiance coming out of it, because we're in a horror school with no one here. But it's going to have a specific ambiance just for that room, because it's the music room. Now let's go to this piano and lift that thing from out between that keys and get it. Get it. Get it. Yes, there's a palette knife. We have it. You're going to have a conversation. I'm going to try it. Fukuroi took the palette knife in the hand and started digging between the keys of the piano with it and attempt to dislodge whatever was stuck. It took a lot of effort, more effort than expected, and created an unpleasant scraping sound that kind of hurt my ears. But ultimately... Alright, I got it. We got another key that I'm going to use on the cabinet, I hope. Fukuroi right handed the small key, which I pocketed in my pocket. Let's go to the cabinet now. What could this be? It's a box I'm going to take. Or at least try to, but it's locked. Yes, I know. The key turned with it any without any resistance, and the heavy glass door opened right up. 
I moved the rectangular box from inside and marveled at the feel of wood. It was the best feel I've ever felt on my fingertips. It was all woody. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Doesn't seem dangerous or anything. It's probably Pandora's box. I would worry, because there's a bomb in there. Ha ha, there is a girl line. I can believe I just laughed. I guess Rikuro is over serious. Dead pain reactions have become a source of strength for me. I can't even describe how grateful I was to have him there. It was like a pillar of strength. With that in mind, I fiercely opened the Paulonia box. Why does Paulonia sound familiar? I remember that from a Sayaka. I couldn't pronounce it. I could not pronounce that word earlier. It was from the chapter before this when I was like in the party and... Yeah. Inside of wrapped in silk is a small wooden board named calligraphy. What is this? Well, I kind of think you'd see at someone's grave. I think I know where to use this thing that you'd see at a grave. They use it to burn the Buddhist cedar ceremonies. I wasn't particularly well versed in Buddhist practices, but it seemed like a good idea to have. So let's go up and use it on the girl's room. Use this thing to open it up, because I've had my fair share of doing it before in the first game. I had to do the same thing so that Mayu would be able to pee in her bathroom. And then it didn't work, so she tried peeing outside, and then she got stranded, and then she ended up peeing herself, and then needing to be pee again. Which wasn't a really good thing, it had me face palming multiple times. Multiple, multiple times. I don't understand what the game creators are thinking, but it's like, okay, we have to have some sort of mode for the people. Let's make a girl wanna pee. The atmosphere feels heavier than it does anywhere else. And the door is covered in protective charms. It seems like they'd be shut up tight. It's not even locked. It just won't open. Maybe we can just use that grave tag we found yet. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, wasn't it? I'm gonna try it and not step away, because I don't know why you would want to step away from this situation. The writing on these paper charms really does look pretty similar to the writing on the grave tag. What are we supposed to do with it? Maybe we try chucking out the seals. Sounds like a good way to get cursed. How about I set it on the ground nearby instead? Vicroy did exactly that, and after only a few moments, there was a notable change in the air. And then, all of a sudden, the grave tag emitted a bright blue light and the door was engulfed in flames. C crap. The whole building is burning down. The whole building will burn down. No. Wait, look! It already turned to run, but Fukuroi's urging I turned back. And I have to admit, what I saw defiled all my expectations, and explanations as well. The flames weren't actually engulfing the door, but rather just protective paper charms affixed to the... to it. The door, the wall, and the floor were untouched. After several seconds of burning, the paper charms were completely vaporized, and the flames dutifully vanished. As if they were never even there. That's weird, let's go into the girls' room now. Now we can peep to our own desires. The protective charms are gone. The girls' restroom now stands wide open. Let's go. That's... Yeah, I... Okay, let's... I guess let's go do this, don't I? I can't just click on the door. Like in any other game. There's a skeleton there, I think. Is that a skeleton? There's a body hanging from one of the ceiling beams. Swinging back and forth ever so slightly. It's completely decomposed, but judging by the uniform, it's probably a female in junior or senior high school in life. Behind this swinging corpse is a conspicuous hole, visible in the black wall. And around it on the sides, there's a graffiti, exactly the kind you'd think expect in a public lavatory, but from dirty drawings to four good times. Call me. I'll be waiting for you. Dead cats in Class 3's locker. I'm watching you from above. From 3A Loves. Deputy study teacher, Mr. something, just die already, you pervert. There is a name tag on the girl's uniform, Ruben, that person, Moeka, Natsuno. That was weird. I don't even understand what just happened. I'm kind of open these and, like, see her? Maybe? I can only examine these two. It's locked from the inside. Okay. What about this one? It's locked from the. Okay, yeah. Wait, there's a tiny hole in the door. What's this? Maybe we can see inside from here. I'm going to take a peek. Maybe we can see what's in there from this hole. If my game does not freeze. Gotta press this. 
I'd press that button so my game would not freeze. I'm actually going in a safe state right now just in case it does freeze. Mitsuki, come on. I accidentally pressed the wrong button again. I'm sorry. I, I, I did it again, actually. I need to press the back button. I'm sorry, twice. Mitsuki, come on. I put an eye into the hole. Until the delta glint of another eye staring back at me from within. <gasps> what is it? Somebody's in there. Was looking back at me. What? That can't be. You'll see any feet along the bottom of the stall, right? Let me have a look. Fukuroi ducked down and peeked in through the hole, exactly as I had. Ugh! <laughs> Fukuroi, what happened? Are you alright? Uh, Fukuroi. No. No, you're joking, right? Fukuroi fell to his side. And as soon as I could see his face, I noticed that his glasses lens were cracked. And his right eye was bloody. My game's freezing again. I need to press this, this press press. Stop doing that. Stop stop doing that. Okay, let's hope it doesn't glitch out this time. I don't even understand why it is glitching out. But on close yeah, I know wait I noticed a round hole in the lens. As if a small stick or flat needle had been instantaneously driven through it deep into his eye. Fukuroi, Fukuroi, please, stay with me. There was no hint of a response. It just kept subtly convulsing as if it had been electrocuted. How had this happened? What was going on? Boys aren't allowed in the girls' room. I knew that someone didn't want me peeping! I knew it! Oh, it's little Yuki. A oh, freaking Yuki. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to him? What was he wanting to what was he going to do to you? Come on, Yuki Kano. I know you're better than that. Go in the corner and think about what you just did. H who what? What did you do? I still door open, revealing a little girl with an airy blue glow about her. She looked to be around grade school age, a fifth or sixth grader maybe. One of her eyes went completely pulverized, but her face showed no indication of pain. Rather, it had a certain stoic quality to it. It was unreadable. The most disturbing of all, however, was the object she held in her right hand. It was an awl or an ice pick or some such thing, with a bloody tripping blade. Are you the one who let that boy in here? W wait. I. You, that's your give me back face. I am very well versed in this face. Before I even had a chance to answer, the girl leaped from the stall with binding speed. That's not allowed. Ah! Oh, oh, no! Reacting as quickly as I could, I threw my arm in front of my face. I almost immediately felt the ice pick blade pierce right into it. Not just once, but twice. Three times. I dug deep into my arm, my palm, my shoulder. Stop! Stop! It hurts! Uh. <laughs> I had to run, but she wasn't about to let me. She just quietly kept letting a car drive past me outside, and kept hacking away, working way up and down the entire length of my arm. Bit by bit, another car drove by me. Skin and flesh was chipped away, until finally the ice pick completely penetrated my palm and began boring into my cheek. Eventually, my ear was hacked apart, and then I was scalped. So thoroughly that I could hear the sound of my skin peeling away with my remaining ear. There was nothing I can, nothing in the world but pain at this point. I couldn't focus on anything else if I wanted to. My vision was blank. But I honestly couldn't tell if it was because I had eyes closed, or if I simply didn't have eyes anymore. I only knew for sure that I was still being hacked apart because I could hear it. The pain gave no indication, as I was already omnipresent. I begged for mercy several times in vain. I finally started praying that his agony would have come to an end. God, please. 
I'll endure whatever trials lie ahead with open arms. If you'd have saved me now. I beg of you. Please. Make it stop. Wrong end. What did I do wrong? I'm not supposed to examine that stall. That's what I did wrong. No stall for me. It gave me a choice to look through the stall. And I said yes. I should not have said yes. I should have said the opposite of yes, which happens to be the word called no. That's what I should have done. But, uh, well, I'm going to end off this episode here. So, I had a lot of fun. This one looks like it's going to have a lot more gameplay. Kind of like the first few chapters. It's going to have more, less, actually a less focus on story. More, a little less than the other chapters, but it's still going to have a, because it's freaking visual enough, it's going to have a bunch of story to it. But I mean, it's not going to have as much, and it's going to be more gameplay and horrifying, and there's going to be an intro playing, I'm going to skip. And well, uh, before anything else happens, like another intro popping up without my consent, I'm going to say thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>